Okay, I think we're good. We're rolling. Hello, and welcome back to Pete's Behavioral Insights and Theories, aka Pete's Bits. Our family has recently grown to over 600 subscribers on the channel, which is an absolutely redonkulous number of people, but I'm just so happy that you guys are enjoying the content and I really, really appreciate the support. If you're watching this video and you're not yet subscribed to this channel, why don't you go ahead right now and do that, hit that big red subscribe button down below this video, and if you're feeling extra generous, why don't you ring that notification bell too, so that you don't miss out on all of my latest behavioral science content. Now, at this point on the channel, you should probably be aware that we humans we're pretty biased. So far, behavioral scientists have uncovered over 200 different systematic problems with our cognition that lead to us making consistent, predictable, irrational decisions all the time. Now, we behavioral science and not stocky folk, we know that the best way to counter this poor decision making is to use good choice architecture. But if you go out into many other circles and ask people, hey, what do you think is the solution to people's irrational, poor decision making? They'll probably say this. Well, if humans are biased, then we should just use a computer algorithm. Computer algorithms are objective, right? Because it's a computer. However, after watching today's video, you should hopefully realize that that isn't the case. In fact, computers can be extremely biased, sometimes even worse than humans, because the data that we feed these computers comes from humans, and therefore any kind of biases that existed before could be extrapolated to ridiculous lengths and therefore make the problem much worse. And to help me explain how algorithms become biased, I have my wonderful friend Ghana Pogrebna, who's a behavioral data scientist at the Alan Turing Institute and is a lecturer at the University of Birmingham. Hi, this is Ghana Pogrebna and this is Pete's Behavioral Insights and Series. Ghana and I are going to be talking about how algorithms become biased, in particular how their training sets influence their biases. Now, you might not know what a training set is, so let me just briefly explain. Your training set is the initial data you feed your algorithm, and that's the data that your algorithm learns from. So when it tries to make predictions in the future, it's going to be doing it based on this past data. And if that past data isn't very good, then you're going to lead to some biases, as we'll see in a second. Also, I should let you know before we start that this conversation is part two of a conversation that I had from an earlier video with Ghana Pogrebna about social media, which is why at the start of this video you'll see Ghana with a background with Mark Zuckerberg's face on it, that's because we were talking about Facebook. If you want to go watch that video then you can, a link should be appearing in the corner right now. But that's just a quick explanation as to why we have Mark Zuckerberg in the background for the first part of the conversation. Alright, that's enough of an intro from me, on with the video. Can we talk about training sets and how this leads to biases and algorithms? Uh, yes, absolutely. This is my favorite topic. <laughs> there are many problems you can have with the training sets. I will concentrate on two main problems. The first problem is incomplete sets and the second problem is biased sets. And there is a difference between the two. So what happens when we have in an incomplete set? An incomplete set means that you have um, data that is not representative of uh, a population, for example, and then you are trying to um, write an algorithm that will actually try to describe, kind of have some sort of universal value. The, the, the easiest example of this is um, facial recognition algorithms. So uh, we do know how to write very good algorithms for um, different um, ethnical groups. Uh, so we can write uh, separate algorithms that are very good for you know, re facial recognition of a particular ethnical group or racial group. However, uh, if we, you try to make a universal <laughs> <laughs> algorithm, it's very difficult. I'm going to show you, uh, like, this is very, very recent example. So this is uh, a person from my uh, Twitter, Twitter feed. And uh, what uh, this person tried to do um, is uh, they uh, put this uh, kind of two photographs. So there is like basically, there is this one photograph and the second photograph. So the first photograph starts kind of with the white guy and goes to the black guy. <laughs> and then the second we have a black guy followed by the white guy. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether that's a black person, really, you could have any kind of other ethnicity than white in there and you will get exactly the same result. And as you know, the um, Twitter has an algorithm that uh, basically concentrates on the face, right? So when you, if you put a picture, it tries to concentrate on the face and tries to get a kind of a, a, a central sort of square around the face. Um, and basically, you know, when this person uploaded these two pictures, naturally uh, they thought that 
the algorithm will select the first face it will find on the first picture and the first um, uh, face it will find on the second picture. So we basically should have kind of one white face and one, uh, the, the Obama should be the second one. But uh, this is this was the result. As you can see uh, on your screen right now, it was basically two <laughs> white faces. Um, and this is very characteristic. So in a sense, we do not have very good, you know, we, we do not have very good ways of uh, making this universal algorithms precisely because the training sets that we use uh, uh, for uh, facial recognition algorithms um, normally have uh, like overwhelming majority of pictures are of white white people. Um, not only white people, but white, white males, <laughs> which is very important. This is another example of the same problem of incomplete data set. So as you can see the uh, so this here is the, the deep learning um, uh, algorithm is trying to reconstruct um, the Obama picture, which is distorted by noise. So you, you know as a human <laughs> that this is uh, Barack Obama, Barack Obama's picture. But when the algorithm is trying to restore it, uh, to, restore, to restore the face, to remove the noise, what you get is a white guy, right? So this is um, extremely common problem. And again, I just want to emphasize that you can write, and we do have algorithms that are trained purely, for example, on a, a kind of um, racial minority or ethnic minority pictures, but um, um, it's not universal. So there was even at one point uh, there was a discussion about having a, some sort of um, facial recognition algorithm uh, running in, uh, you know, passport controls in airports. <laughs> and uh, the, there was a big problem because, you know, the, these um, algorithms could not really identify people very well. So if you are white male, it's okay. If you are, say, black female, then you got no chance. Uh, if you have if you have kind of Asian uh, uh, appearance, you also have big problems. But effectively, what was then decided is, oh, perhaps you know people could could get to the officer, and the officer will say uh, which algorithm should be used. Should should this be an algorithm for <laughs> white people or for a minority recognition algorithm? But obviously, that has even more. Uh, ethical problems because then a person, you know, a human being decides who you are, what your ethnicity is. And that's absolutely inappropriate, right? This is completely unethical. But we still have these issues, you know, and, and so, but I want to say that this is not because we do not understand these problems, it's, it's just because there are there are incomplete data sets. And for that reason, many companies, like for example, IBM now uh, announced that they will not work in facial recognition algorithms anymore because there is no way you can make them ethical and there is no way you can make your, you know, the systems complete. So it's all based on kind of incomplete data. So second problem is when you're training set is actually biased. You know, when you know that there is a bias and you train the algorithm on a biased set. So the, the most notorious example of this is, of course, Amazon, uh, Amazon hiring, uh, uh, hiring algorithm that basically was really discriminatory towards women. So the reason for that is that they had this kind of software engineer de engineering department, which um, primarily had uh, male engineers. Um, so, so they trained the algorithm based on people they had in the department. But of course, <laughs> if you are designing an algorithm and you know you have an issue, you have a diversity issue with this particular unit in your organization, then surely you need to make sure that the algorithm offsets this problem. But the algorithm was trained on this really biased set where it would favor male applicants and would really be unfavorable towards female applicants. So what was happening is if you had a CV where it said, um, I don't know, women's college or some sort of, uh, you know, women's, women's award of some sort that people normally put on CV if they are female. So normally they would have a number of these things on CV. And uh, when the algorithm would see words like that, they would basically set this CV aside and you would be really discriminated against. 
so the, um, as far as I know, the, the algorithm is now scrapped and they are, they, they are not using it anymore, but this is an example of a biased set. So the difference between biased and incomplete is that in the first case, we just do not have complete sets. So we have pre kind of predominantly data of certain kind, and it just uh, so happens that you have, you know, a lot of data for the majority group, for example, and not enough data about minor minority groups. But then, um, you know, the bias set is when you know uh, a priori that there is a problem, and uh, you still train algorithms, uh, your algorithm based on this biased data. Hey, congrats, you made it to the end of today's video. I hope you really enjoyed my conversation with Ghana about biases and algorithms. Thank you so much to Ghana for talking to me about her favourite topic of conversation. And thank you to you for making it this far in today's video. If you made it this far in the video, please can I remind you to give me a like down below, it really helps me out. And while you're there, why don't you leave me a comment about what you want to see from this channel in future videos. New video ideas are always welcome. Alright, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.